Um, instead of telling you what I do though, I thought I'd tell you about how I got those jobs because there's so many interesting careers in science and you hear about them all the time and you see people like you know, Paul Zare up on stage but you don't really know how they got there, what classes did they take in school, what decisions did they make. So I thought it might be helpful to tell you how I ended up where I am and some of the things that I wish people had told me along the way. So, as far as what I do for a day job, I think I have one of the most interesting jobs in the province. I work at the British Columbia Centre for Disease Control, that's us. Uh, we're located over by City Hall in the compound where Vancouver General Hospital and BC Cancer are. And at BC CDC, uh, I'm basically a disease detective. My official title is Molecular Epidemiologist, uh, which basically means I use uh, sort of DNA and genetic information to figure out how outbreaks are happening and spreading. Um, but really, it just boils down to basically being like Grissom or Seidel from CSI and studying outbreaks instead of crimes. So essentially, I use uh, DNA and DNA analysis techniques, as well as some other things like field work and interviewing patients uh, to figure out how germs are behaving. And we study a range of stuff. Basically, whatever is making people sick in British Columbia is what we're interested in studying. So sometimes it's influenza, sometimes it's tuberculosis, sometimes it's food poisoning. And we like to figure out how these outbreaks start, how they're spreading around the province, and how we might be able to stop them them either before they start or before they get too big. So that's one of my jobs. I get to do science in the daytime. My other very cool job, though, uh, is that I get to talk about doing science, which I think is just as fun, if not more fun, than actually doing science. So I do some science journalism, some writing. Uh, I've got a blog for the Globe and Mail's globecampus.ca website. I do some uh, newspaper and print journalism. And the most fun thing that I do in science journalism is doing science television. So I get to host uh, the occasional episode of The Nature of Things. I get to take over from David Suzuki, which are very big shoes to fill, but it's a really fun job to do. Uh, and a couple years ago, in 2008, I hosted an eight-part series for CBC called Project X. And that was basically kind of a pop science documentary. I'll show you a very cool clip from it later on in the presentation. Uh, but basically, I got to do stuff from um, flying in a zero-g flight. There's a picture of that in the upper left. Uh, I got to go through fighter pilot training and got put in a human centrifuge and spun around at 5 Gs. There's me in the centrifuge and me looking like a little fighter pilot all fancy. Um, all sorts of cool stuff. I trapped alligators in the middle of the night in a swamp in Louisiana. I got to look for parasites in pig poop in a small town in Mexico. It was a really fun and fantastic job. Now, growing up, I had no idea that any of these jobs even existed. When I was in elementary school, when I was in high school, even as an undergraduate and a grad student, I didn't know that there was such a thing as a molecular epidemiologist or a disease detective. And I didn't know that you could make money you know, going on science television and talking about science all day long. I figured scientists were just kind of the basic things. Scientists were doctors, or they were astronauts, or chemists, or physicists. Now, if I didn't know a lot of these things, I was pretty tuned into science as a youngster. If I didn't know a lot of these careers existed, I figure most other people don't know that these careers exist. So what I thought I'd talk about today is basically how I got these cool jobs and what are some of the other cool jobs that are out there in science and all the things that I wish that people had told me along the way so that the process would have been a little bit easier. So I'll start with um, what I wanted to be when I was small and we'll kind of work our way forward from my, my early years to uh, my bachelor's degree and grad school and how I ended up on science TV and how I ended up tracking cooties uh, around the province. So I should start though by saying that I didn't always want to be a scientist. And here is a picture of me from 1991. I'm wearing an awful outfit, this blue, bright blue spandex pants and a pink jacket tied around my waist. But it was okay, it was the 80s and 90s, that was allowed. But here I am in front of the Wonders of Life Pavilion at Disney World, Epcot Center in Disney World. And there's a big DNA molecule in the background. And if you look at the expression on my face, I really don't look too impressed with science, which is pretty funny considering I was going to make my living off of DNA eventually. I don't really look all that into it at this point. 
So I didn't always want to be a scientist. When I was small, when I was five, my grand career plan was threefold. I had this grand idea that I was going to be a doctor in the morning. In the afternoon, I would go over to my dental practice and look after people. Teeth, and then in the evening, I would take the stage as a prima ballerina. Um, it's kind of interesting that for somebody that ultimately ended up doing something that's a little bit science and a little bit artistic, at an early age, you could already tell that there was an interest in science and in the arts. I just didn't articulate it very well. Um, I think my career choices at this stage were primarily driven by what would earn me a lot of money and what would make me famous. Uh, I didn't really think much about my career through uh, elementary school. In grade six or seven or so, we had to do uh, a show and tell career day presentation where we had to bring in somebody from the community that had an interesting career and have them talk to our class. So I didn't really know who to bring in, so I asked my mom um, if she had any friends that could come in and she knew of a lawyer that could come talk to the class. And he was really cute too, so I thought, oh, that would be perfect. So I brought him into the class and said, okay, well, maybe I'll be a lawyer when I grow up. And then I didn't think much about careers until uh, grade 10. And we had to do this thing in grade 10 in our business class where you sat down in front of a computer program for basically three hours and answered questions about the tasks that you liked to do and the tasks that you didn't like doing. And from your answers to these hundreds of questions, the computer program would spit out a little report telling you what the best career for you would be. So we all in the business class did our question answering and we came back the next week and the teacher handed out the reports to everybody. And my report said that I should be a museum conservator. Basically somebody that takes old paintings and fixes them up again like new and preserves them for future generations. And I'd never even heard of a museum conservator, but it didn't have any money attached to it, it sounded like. It didn't have any fame attached to it. So frankly, I dismissed it as boring. Uh, but again, it was kind of interesting that that's a career that does combine a little bit of science and a little bit of art. So this common theme uh, in my career had sort of popped back again. Now it wasn't really until age 16 that I ever got an idea of what I actually wanted to do for a living that was reasonable and didn't involve being, you know, three different things at different points over the course of a single day. So when I was age 16, inspiration struck and that inspiration came from a very unlikely place. It came from Dustin Hoffman. Little Dustin Hoffman uh, in Outbreak. And this movie, uh, many of you may not have seen it, uh, it's bad. <laughs> it came out in 1995 when I was 16. And it was the story of uh, Dustin Hoffman as a virus hunter in the US Army Infectious Research Division, USAMRED. And in the movie, Dustin Hoffman, Rene Russo, and Morgan Freeman basically have to save uh, America from this horrible hemorrhagic illness. Now, as somebody that actually kind of does this for a living now, I can look back in Outbreak and say that it's possibly the dumbest movie ever, um, but I'll just let you see for yourselves. African jungle. A small monkey is captured, bound for a pet store in America. The animal carries a deadly virus. Ah, Some of us have doubts about what we're about to do. It would be less than human if we didn't. But the fate of the nation, perhaps the world, is in our hands. We cannot, we dare not refuse this burden. I'm confident that each of you will do his duty. God forgive us. Your town is being quarantined. We got 19 dead. We got 100 more infected. spreading like a bush fire. What are you talking about? If one of them's got it, then ten of them got it now. And if one of them gets out of Cedar Creek, we have a very interesting problem. And that bug gets out of there. 260 million Americans will be dead or dying. I'm leaving with the team in an hour. From the heart of a small California town. Damn it, Sam. I want to say this to the same as you. To the inner circle of power in Washington. The most optimistic projection for the spread of the virus is this. 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours. The greatest medical crisis of all time. We can't stop it. Begins. Try to remain calm. Many people are dying and are going to continue to die unless we find this monkey. There will be panic, the likes of which we have never seen.
<laughs> so I will ask two trivia questions as well. Um, that slideshow is restored to its former glory on the screen. Um, the first one, this is a hard one. Uh, it is two science classes. Uh, so there was a monkey in that clip. Uh, we have to find this monkey, that one. Does anybody recognize that monkey from another TV show that he starred on? I saw a hand go up in the back of us right away. Who is that monkey? Uh, do, do I have to tell what, what type of monkey it is or from what show? Uh, from what show that monkey? Friends? Yes. Can you remember his name too? Uh, it was Marcel. It was Marcel. <laughs> so much. slide. 